it is time to go back to the Matrix. However, is this film as good as people think it is? Well, let's find out. I'm Berryman, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. The Matrix Resurrections is a 2021 American science fiction action film produced, co-written and directed by Lana Wachowski. The film is set 60 years after Matrix Revolutions and it follows Neo, who seemingly leads an ordinary life as a video game developer, who is having trouble with distinguishing fantasy from reality. A group of rebels, with the help of a reprogrammed version of Morpheus, free Neo from a new version of the Matrix and help fight a new enemy that holds Trinity captive. When the film was released, it only got mixed reviews. While critics praised its performances of this cast and its ambition in storytelling and action scenes, although there was criticism that was aimed at its visuals and the recasting of the several of the main actors. However, what have I found wrong with this film? Well, let's find out as we discuss 10 Things Wrong with The Matrix Resurrections. Number 10, Agent Smith. So yes, Agent Smith is back in this film. Now, he was recast because Hugo Weaving was already committed to something else. He really wanted to actually do this film, but they recast him. However, how they've actually done this is what's wrong with this film. I've got no objection with the recasting because they sort of explained that programs can change their shells in the Matrix Revolution. So that was already explained, so that's fine. It's how they came, showed us who Smith was. Rather than doing it as a surprise reveal right in the middle of the film where he actually turns back to Smith, they showed you straight away so as soon as Neo walks into Smith's office, they showed you that this is Smith. And I did not like that. I would have wanted this to be like a bit of a twist in the middle of the film. That's what the Matrix films are good at, and you've ruined it by showing us Smith way too early. Why can't this be just a friend of Neo's trying to help him out? But no, I didn't quite like that, and I thought it sort of ruined the film slightly. Number nine, Meta. Oh my God, this film is so meta, it's unbelievable. Let's face it, The Matrix has no bearing on the real world as we live in. Maybe it does, but it doesn't. Even the cities were not named after cities. They were just called mega cities or something along like that. So why did you make this so meta? By name dropping lots of Warner Brothers properties. Now I love Warner Brothers, but you didn't need to do that, especially in this film. I think I complained about it in the Space Jam video I did. But this one, and it even drops in what actually happened with the making this film. It's a case of either you make this film or we get someone else to do it. And they've actually put that in this film by saying either you make this game or Warner Brothers is gonna get someone else to do it. This is what happened in real life. They threatened the Wachowski saying, if you don't do it, we're gonna get Zach Penn to actually make a screenplay for us. <laughs> I mean, it's a good little middle finger from Alana Wachowski, but same again, it sort of ruins the illusion of the Matrix films, and I wasn't on board with that one. Number eight, flashbacks. There are so many flashbacks in this film. Now, not flashbacks within the film, flashbacks to the previous trilogy. Why? Why, why, why? There were so many of them and it was just starting to get really frustrating watching. I've seen the original Matrix trilogy so many times. I don't need to be shown it watching this film. I was quite happy to watch this film. I didn't want to re-watch the original trilogy. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this point has caused a bit of a contention between me and my missus because she actually liked it, but I didn't. I thought it sort of ruined the illusion or it ruined the flow of the film. Bizarrely enough, they've done the same mistake in Star Trek Picard where they're doing flashbacks to his parents and it's like, I'm getting fed up with this. I want to watch this part, not what happened years ago. Let me enjoy this film. Thank you. Number seven, rehashing the first film. This film is about two and a half hours long and the first hour and 10 minutes is essentially retelling the first film. Actually, if you think about it, this whole film is the first film in a different light. 
Think of something new and original. It was new, it was original when it came out. There's been so many copycats out there. And essentially that's what this film, it's a copycat of the original 1999 version of The Matrix. That was good. You didn't have to do it again. Think of something new. Number five, Tom. This to me was very teeth gritting for me. Every time Smith saw Neo, he called him Tom. No. Smith calls him Mr. Anderson. Every time. That's what it was. But no, this new version of Smith had this real bad habit of coming up saying, Tom. <sighs> I found it. It was this. <laughs> that was really, really getting on my nerves every time he said it, that I was gritting my teeth, rolling my eyes. Why were you calling him Tom? Your character calls him Mr. Anderson. I would have bought that. Everyone else calls him Neo, but you call him Mr. Anderson, not Tom. <laughs> Am I just being a bit too harsh this week? Number four, Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I've already complained about this film being a bit too meta, but this one should have been. So there's a character called Bugs, who is named Bugs because of after Bugs Bunny. And she has a tattoo of a rabbit. Why was that rabbit not the one from Bugs Bunny? You've already name dropped him. You've already said I'm named after him. It would have made perfect sense. There wouldn't have been a licensing issue because you're both owned by Warner Brothers. So no copyright or licensing issues there. <laughs> It didn't make sense. I mean, obviously, it looked cool in the trailer, and I would go for, in the trailer, put the normal ra rabbit. But in the actual film, it should have been a t tattoo of the proper Bogs Bunny. <sighs> yeah, there's so many things on this film that's really annoying the hell out of me. Number three, bombs. This new version of The Matrix has loads of NPCs, if you're a gamer like me, but essentially they are bots to just populate The Matrix a little bit. Now, that means that the analyst could control these bots quite easily. And he does. During the climax chase of this film, he starts using these bots as bombs by chucking them out and trying to get the good guys. Except that doesn't make them bombs, because bombs explode on impact. These would be more projectiles. So why couldn't you say, let's use the bots as projectiles? Information, you need to give us the right information because nitpickers, who is already being really annoyed at this film, will pick it up and point you out on it. These bots were projectiles, not bombs. Number two, making reloaded redundant. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, well, that's a good thing. And I can sort of see their point, but let me explain why I think this makes Matrix Reloaded redundant. Try saying that a few times if you had a few nights to drink. So basically, the whole point of Matrix Reloaded was the source, which was in Neo, the source code was in Neo, has to go back and give it back to the machine so they can reset the Matrix and restart the process again. Okay, I actually bought that and I understood that from that film. Now, in this film, my Neo only has half the source code because the other half of source code is in Trinity. Now, on one hand, that explains why these two were so inexplicably drawn together. However, that would mean the whole architect's plan in Reloaded wouldn't have worked because they wouldn't have had the source back to reset the matrix. So yeah. What you've done in this film is essentially said it reloaded wouldn't have worked. That's my theory anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Number two, what happened to Smith? Before I say what happened to Smith, there was a lot of people unhappy that the fact that Smith worked with Neo at the end of this film. I kind of like that actually, because at the end of the day, they are so intertwined that on this occasion, their goals were the same. They have to take down the analyst. So it makes sense, and I'm on board with that one. Oh look, I'm being nice about this film. However, once they've done that, Smith's personality would have gone back just to attacking Neo because that's what he's compelled to do, that's what he's programmed to do. He just can't help himself. But he didn't, he just sort of disappeared. 
What happened to him? No explanation, no nothing. He was just like, there one second, no mention for the rest of the film. Especially as Smith was wanting to be the one that took down the analyst. I didn't make it that bit didn't make sense it's like you've built all that up and you've just not pulled the trigger on this one am I actually being that harsh on this film this week final thoughts so what do I really think about this film well yes I am finding this film really really annoying but when you put all that aside it's actually not that bad of a film Yes, this film has so many errors, so many things wrong, and it does sort of dilute the original trilogy a little bit, especially as we're forced to rewatch it. But if you can get yourself past that, yes, you have actually got a good film. It's a good film with good story. It's got a good fight sequences. I actually enjoyed it. I actually didn't mind the visuals. The new morphing effects when uh, people in the Matrix turn into agents, I actually liked that. I also did like the fact that the Morpheus was inside a Matrix inside the Matrix. I love that. This was actually a really good thought-provoking film and it does what I was worried about, bring Neo and Trinity back from the dead in a understandable fashion. Now, one of the things that it does ruin the film about was at the end of Matrix Revolutions, did Neo survive or did Neo die? Now, according to Matrix Online, he did die and they kept his body. Bizarrely enough, this film doesn't actually contradict what happens in the Matrix Online either. It sort of does flow it on a little bit. But yeah, this film's pretty good. It's got a good soundtrack. I didn't mind the visuals. Yeah, it's good film. Keanu Reeves' acting was a hell of a lot better then what I said about him in Bill and Ted. He, he managed to get back into the Neo character so much more easier than he did getting back into the Bill character. The only thing I thought was funny about Keanu Reeves is when he was in the real world with his shaved head and no beard, he looks so old. I mean, obviously he has aged a lot, but I, I just thought it was really weird. It's like, I'm so used to seeing him in his John Wick hairstyle and beard, that seeing him back to the old real world Neo, it was weird and he looked old. But it works in the context of this film. So what am I going to rank it? Well, I'm gonna surprise a lot of people by rankings this week. Because let's face it, I have said there are so many annoying things about this film that really grip my teeth. I'm still gonna give this an eight out of 10 berries because overall it is actually a good film with just lots and lots and lots of annoying things. But that's my opinion, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, on to next week. Next week we're gonna do an 80s film that made a mega star out of its lead actor and its director became one of the highest grossing directors of all time, a title I very much doubt he's ever gonna get knocked off on. Quite a cryptic but easy clue. Let me know in the comments what you think I'm talking about. But until then, take care. Bye-bye.